we can worship him. I'm not worshiping a football team. I'm worshiping Jesus. I'm not worshiping some superstar basketball player. I'm worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to be sanctified this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we leave the house this morning, something's going to happen. Amen. I believe that this morning. Something's going to happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be turning to the book of 2 Samuel, the 8th chapter, amen, beginning with the 10th verse, amen. 2 Samuel, the 8th chapter, 10th and 11th verse. We'll also be reading from 2 Timothy, the 2nd chapter, the 20th and 21st verse. So we'll be reading from both portions of Scripture, Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. I give glory and honor unto the Lord today. Amen. I thank the Lord for allowing us to be here together. To our visitors and guests, we're so thankful you are here. We do pray that God will transform your life today. Amen. I give honor to the Lord. I give honor to men of God in my life. I give honor to my wife today. Amen. I'm very thankful for her. And uh, I just want you to know uh, I consider myself very blessed to be married to the wonderful woman that God has given me. And uh, we have a great first lady around here. Amen. I'm not just saying that to get brownie points. Amen. I'm not expecting an extra special dinner or anything like that. In fact, after church today, I'm grabbing Jordan. We're going to a birthday party. <laughs> so... Uh, so, you know, life happens. Amen? Amen? But I am thankful you are here in the house today, and I do believe that the Lord has given me a word. Right. If I've ever been encouraged, I was encouraged last night right. in my office, and I, I'll tell you a little bit about that later, but uh, I, I'm thankful. Amen. You are here today. Amen. Praise God. I thank you, young men, for holding up the back wall. I know you'll keep it standing for me. Amen. Praise God. Then Toy sent Jerome, or Jerram, however you want to say it, Joram, his son unto King David to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against Hadadezar and smitten him. For Hadadezar had wars with Toy. And Jerome, or Jerame, however you want to say that, brought with him vessels of silver. Everybody say vessels. vessels. And vessels of gold. Say vessels. And vessels of brass. Everybody say vessels. vessels. Which also King David did dedicate. Everybody say dedicate. dedicate. Unto the Lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued. Turning to the book of Second Timothy. The second chapter in the 20th verse. And the word of God reads. But in a great house there are not only vessels. Of gold and silver, everybody say vessels. vessels, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel, everybody say vessel, vessel. unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Everybody say every good work. Amen. Amen. Everybody say every good work. Amen. Amen. For a little while this morning, I'm going to preach from this thought. Vessels unto the Lord. Vessels unto the Lord. Say it with me. Vessels unto the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I am a vessel unto the Lord. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to worship you and to praise you in this house. 
I'm praying, mighty God, that you would anoint these lips of clay one more time. Anoint our ears to hear, Lord. Bring understanding to our mind. Help us, mighty God, to grow closer to you. For we know this morning that we are vessels to be used and to be poured out for your glory. And I give you the glory and the honor for that in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Let's give our hands to put our hands together. I believe something wonderful is going to happen in this house today. Amen. I just believe somebody's going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I believe the waters are troubled and somebody's going to be baptized in Jesus' name. Because God is good. Amen. No matter what your circumstance, God is good. No matter what you're going through, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I tell you, you can be seated. But if you come to Peace Tabernacle on a Sunday and, and your basket's not full, amen, you just ain't been eating right. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Stone King many years ago spoke about being in a service. And as he was leaving, he, he was stopped and the Lord told him to turn around. And when he turned around, he saw angels going about the congregation. And he had, they had baskets. And they were picking up, looked like bread, in the middle of the, of the rows of the, of the congregation. And he asked the Lord, what's, what's going on? And he says, that's the angel. And they're picking up all the blessings that the saints decided they didn't want. I don't know about you, but when I come to a house of worship, I come to get every blessing I can get. If I come with oppression, I want to get it out the door. I want to pick up a spirit of joy. If depression is trying to get me at home, I want to make sure I take enough Holy Ghost happiness home with me that I can run every devil of depression out of my house. Well, praise God, praise God. And before I get going this morning, I just want to say we had a tremendous youth gathering at our house on Friday night. Amen. We had college kids there we had uh, little kids there we had kids playing on playgrounds we had young men playing basketball we had some older kids sitting around a fire playing the guitar singing how great is our God such philosophy brother Myers was was explained around that campfire that I grew wiser by 15 years but in all seriousness it was wonderful it the food was good I think that young people had a great time. And Sister Donna, I am, well, she's not here this morning, but I'm so sorry for Sister Donna. Amen. She came to pick up C Sierra, and she told Sierra, go in there and get me one of them bacon-wrapped peppers. <laughs> and Sierra did a good thing. She came and said, Sister Bumgarner, uh, Donna wants one of them peppers. And Sister Bumgarner said, well, I'm sorry to tell her, but those were gone hours ago. <laughs> and thanks to Brother Thomas, he helped me. We made over 100 of those things. That had to be at least 100. I mean... And, 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 but they didn't last very long because as soon as they come off the fire we started commencing to eating <laughs> and thanking the Lord all at the same time but it was a great time and, I, and, and my wife and I talked that we are going to do more fellowships like that with every age group amen it was a, we had a lot of visitors there and so that let me know one thing they, sometimes they won't come to church but they'll definitely come for peppers and something we're going to start this week, and as, as I get in the message, I, I know where I'm going, so just stay with me. But starting this Thursday night, Lord willing, amen, uh, we're going to host our first here at the, at the church, in the back, in the fellowship hall, Brother Josh Sis is going to do it. But we're inviting all, and we're going to do it through word of mouth. we got Sister Lauren for that. Praise God. She will spread the word. And I thank God for her. Amen. But we're, we're going to start, and some of you ladies are going to help us sign up. This week, I think I'm going to take care of it and plan the meal, and don't worry about it this week. But then next week, next Thursday night, we're going to have an open discussion with Brother Sisk about God, about things, and we're going to feed college kids in the back. And for that matter, if you want to come be a part of the discussion and, and help, but Brother Sisk is running it. Everybody say, Brother Sisk is running it. That means I put him in charge. That means I want him to do the teaching and most of the speaking. Woo! Praise God! I'll shout on that one all by myself. But if you want to be a part, I don't have a problem with that. You say, well, I just want to come up for the food. Well, listen to what Brother Backus said this morning. And remember, college kids, amen, they like to eat. 
Amen. But we're going to feed them right. Praise God. And so that's a ministry that we're starting here, and I'm looking forward to it. God is doing great things. He really is. But this morning I want to declare to us as a church that I believe in this year of 2018, exciting things are on the way. I'm just waiting by the phone because at any day now, Brother Bear is going to call me and say, next Sunday I'm coming. He promised me this month that he was going to come. He told me he'd give me a week's notice. I took that. At his age, he can do what he wants. But I look forward to Brother Bear coming. I look forward in the days ahead, in the month of April. You better get ready. Because April the 20th through the 22nd, Brother Gordon Poe is going to be with us in revival. Amen. And if you, you got any issues, you better get rid of them because he will come. He don't care if he hurts your feelings. He don't care if you get offended. And I love you, and he loves you. But he's going to chase every devil he can out of here. We know that. Amen. Amen. So, you know, God's going to be doing some things around here. But I believe beyond that, God's going to get us right so we can live right. And so today, I just wanted to come and preach to this church. It's time for us to rededicate ourselves. Or if we have not rededicated ourselves, if you're a first-time visitor today or you're someone, amen, it's time for you to make a commitment uh, and dedicate yourself uh, unto the Lord as a vessel of honor i believe that everyone in this church has a purpose and a calling in your life amen to do something for the lord i am not one of those preachers amen every you know i'm, I'm reading a book called lead to follow and in that book it explains a lot of things everything we do in in the church has been brought on from another type of church amen whether it be baptist or methodist you know the mourner's bench came from the methodist you know uh, uh, you know, Sunday school came from the Baptist. Uh, amen. And thinking that the preacher has to do everything came from the Catholics. And I love every one of them. Because they all love Jesus. And I want to let them know what the word says so they can fall in love with him wholeheartedly and understand this is not just a topical experience. This is an eternal experience. It's just not all on the outside, but it's really what's manifested on the inside that makes a difference. The only way I can live the way I live is because of what I got on the inside. Hey, the only way I can do what I do is because of what God put on the inside of me. It's not about what I do on the outside. It's about what I live on the inside. Amen. You just better get ready. I'm a little fired up this morning. Amen. I went to last night, got to studying, and, and I put on Bishop McLean, and, and he got to preaching to me and preaching to the church, and he got me fired up about eight times higher than I really am. Praise God. But we got to get into this thing with everything within us. It ain't time to sit back. It's not time to sit around. It's not time to be lackadaisical. Amen. It's not time to vacillate between spirituality and carnality. One day I'm in church and one day I'm in the world. Hey, it's time for us to get sold out with everything within us uh, to live for God with everything that is in us. And the reason why we don't witness to more people and the reason why we don't do more, amen, is because we have become vessels with nothing on the inside. Woo! Woo! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I believe we need to be in a church that is empowered by the Holy Ghost. If you say it, then you ought to have it. Some people say they got it. Amen. But they're just proclaimers. They're not possessors. Because if you possess the Holy Ghost, it's going to convict you when sin walks in your door. If you possess the Holy Ghost, it's going to change the way you walk. It's going to change the way you talk. You won't go to places you used to go. You won't watch things that will de be detrimental to your spirit if you got the Holy Ghost on the inside. There were five wise and there were five foolish 
virgins. Five had their lamps filled and five of their lamps looked good, but there was nothing on the inside. And when it was time for the bridegroom to come, amen, they didn't have nothing on the inside. I'm just afraid when the bridegroom comes, there's gonna be a lot of people that have shined up the outside, but on the inside, they don't got no oil in their lamp and they're gonna be mis mis misled, misdirected, and confused. And I thought I was right when all the time they were empty. Romans, the ninth chapter, 22nd verse. Praise God. What if God? And Sister Brandy, I hope you got my email. Romans 9, 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles do you know this morning that you are a prepared vessel he prepared you for his glory he prepared you amen to be a vessel of honor a vessel of mercy i told you last night uh, when the lord put this in my heart about the vessels uh, i recalled that brother mclean bishop mclean many years ago had preached about vessels of mercy amen and it was just a wonderful time i clicked on it and i just said well maybe i can use something hallelujah there's nothing sacred under the sun if you're hearing me preach something, I probably got it from somebody else. Now wait a second. Don't get that out of don't get that mixed up. That just means I've listened to a lot of preaching and I put a lot of bread in my basket. Us preachers are kind of like you cooks. When you taste something good, what do you say to that cook? Give me the recipe. Man, that was good. So I'm telling you where I got this because I don't like to take credit for everything. Hello, hello. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in plagiarizing. If I get it from somebody, I'll tell you. It doesn't make it any less effective. I'm just, I'm just giving you my source. When you write a paper for college, you can get points off. Why? Because you don't cite your source. But I'm citing my source as Bishop McLean. I got to listen to that message last night. I about wept and cried in my office because uh, it's been a long time since I heard my bishop's voice. Uh, amen. I, I forgot that during that message he pulled me up uh, and we got to be in Paul and Silas and we got to sing together. I got to listen to me and Bishop singing together. But right in the middle of that message, bro Brother Bishop McLean looks at me and he says, Bummy. He said, God, it's, he said, God's speaking to you, bummy. He says, now, he'd call you bum garner, but he knows you better than that, so he calls you bummy. And he says, God's got you in the palm of his hand. Because you're a vessel of mercy. I told myself, I'm going to record that uh, and keep that on my phone. And when a spirit of discouragement comes against me, I'm just going to play that. When a spirit of depression comes against me, I'm just going to play that. I don't have to hear any voice uh, but that one man's voice. Uh, and no matter what anybody else tells me, uh, you can't tell me no different. I've heard the voice of my bishop, uh, my old shepherd. He said, Bobby, hey man, uh, God's got you in the palm of his hand. Yay! Uh, and so I, I want to share some of the key points of that, that message and remind you as he reminded me that we are vessels uh, of mercy. Uh, amen. Prepared by God for his glory. You're a vessel of mercy today. Amen. Because you were once lost in sin. You were once going down the wrong path. Uh, amen. You should have been, some of you should have been dead a long time ago. Some of you should have overdosed on drugs or been shot in the head. Uh, amen. But God spared your life. Uh, and he gave you the ability to come to the house of worship today and lift up holy. Why do I worship the way I worship? Because God's been good to me. I'm a vessel of mercy. I've been filled with his goodness. I've been filled with his mercy. I've been lost in his love. Hey, that still preaches today. 
We're vessels of mercy. And you don't want me to clap my hands and you don't want me to dance and you don't want me to, hey, God's been too good to me. Amen. He delivered me. He set me free. Yes, Hallelujah. Mama, I'm a vessel of mercy. I can say like Job, I've lost everything, and yet God's restored everything better than it was before. I'm a vessel of mercy, and you don't want me to praise God? I go into my house. Amen. I thank God for my home. It's his home. He, he's provided it. But I got a good roof over my head. I got good clothes on my back. I got good shoes on my feet. Amen. I don't go hungry. You know why? I'm a vessel of mercy. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Hey, we, are, we got a reason to praise the Lord today. Some of you ladies, you're kind of like Mary Magdalene. Mark the, Mark the 16th chapter and the 8th verse. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man. For they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Out of whom he had cast seven devils. I, I like what the bishop said. He says, can't you just imagine how it was for Mary as she's walking in that place uh, and she sees this man sitting over here and she mistakes him for the gardener and she begins to uh, look at him and talk to him and she's not even realizing who she's talking to uh, until she hears that certain Mary and all of a sudden it clicks. Wait, I know that voice. I know who that is. That's my Jesus. And when she realizes who she's talking to, uh, Amen. She understands. Uh, this Jesus uh, is the one that delivered me. Uh, this Jesus is the one that saved me. And he said, Mary, you're a vessel of mercy. Uh, amen. You should have been lost. Uh, you should have been stoned. Uh, but God spared you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, vessels of mercy. We all go through hard times. Come on, listen. This ain't all my message, but it's going, it's going real good. I'm going to keep preaching it. That old bishop grabbed a hold of me, and he made me sing with him. Praise God. <laughs> he got to talking about Paul and Silas. Come on. And you think about those men who were beaten, put into a prison, Jesus. down and out, yes, hurting. Yeah. Hey, man. I mean, they're in shackles in the bottom of the prison and they're in pain and they're hurting. And sometimes that's happened to every one of us. We've all gone through things and life has not been fair and people have talked about us. People have been mean to us. Hey, you know, that happens to everybody. Come on. But we've never been beaten. We've never been put in prison except for the one we put in our own selves. Some of you are in a prison in your mind. You need to be delivered today. Some of you need to get out of that prison of your mind and be set free and be delivered. Hallelujah. I fish with you. Hallelujah. You need to let go and let God have his way in your life. And they realized we're vessels of mercy. Even when I'm down, I'm up. Why? I'm a vessel of mercy. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when they begin to worship in the midnight, I'm trying to tell somebody, you're a vessel of mercy this morning. And when you begin to praise God, Bishop said, what do you think about Jesus? And I said, he is awesome. No, I said, he's all right. <laughs> what do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? Oh, he's all right. You know why I don't get mad at him? He's never done nothing but good to me. I've gone through some heartache. I've gone through some trials. But he's been nothing but good to me. Amen. He's never hurt me once. But he's helped me many, many times. He's never forsook me. But he's always walked right beside me. You're struggling, don't forget who you are. Come on, you're going through it, don't forget who you are. You're a vessel. You're not just anybody, you're a vessel. 
If you receive the Holy Ghost, you're a vessel. You're supposed to be doing something. Oh, yeah, the devil, he likes to bring up your past. You know, I almost feel like the bishop's here with me this morning. The, the devil likes to bring up your past. Uh, he likes to bring up all your failures. Uh, he likes to bring up all your mistakes uh, before you were in the church or even after you were in the church. But you know what? You need to remind him, devil, I'm a vessel of mercy. I'm a vessel unto the Lord. I don't belong to myself. Yes, I made a mistake. Yes, there are failures. But God's glory is going to fill me. And he is going to use me. And he is going to pour me out. Hallelujah. 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 Now we're going to do things a little different this morning. And so don't get nervous. Don't get scared. But I believe that we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. And that He is calling us to sanctify our temples in a house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor if a man therefore purge himself from these sanctify scrub it now I know some of y'all, y'all just eat out of dirty dishes. Come on now. You done y'all done cooked up a mess of bacon in that skillet? I know none of y'all do this. But once y'all got done, y'all didn't worry about dumping the grease, y'all just left it in the skillet. Huh? And y'all just immediately go back and use that same skillet. You don't even you don't even wipe it out. You don't even dump the grease out. You just use what's there. Lord help you. Pastor, they're gonna put a stent in. Come pray for me. My, my. Look, just because you have some blessings, don't be don't be bragging too loud. I probably use the worst example I could use in Texas. Because you, you can use that for many, many purposes: gravy and eggs. But you got to, yeah, you got to use it for later. You, you, you got to save it up for later. You don't. You got to clean the pot every once in a while. Ah, uh, you got to clean those dishes. I love paper plates. I'm not too proud. I love paper plates. Y'all can judge me if you want. I love paper plates. <laughs> Who gonna do dishes? I'll do them here. Give me that plate. Give me that plate. Give me that plate. Boom. God bless y'all. I'm going on. Hey. But you, you clean your plate. You wash it. I like to hand wash them and then put them in the dishwasher. I know. That's crazy. I say, well, first of all, I'm going to wash it. Then I'm going to sanitize it. Kind of like getting saved and sanctified. Come on. But I believe as the vessels of the Holy Ghost, we as vessels of mercy, the Bible, he, he wants to purge us. We got to be purged with the mercies of God. To become the vessels that he desires for us to be. Committed. Everybody say committed. committed. Dedicated. Dedicated. Come on, those are two words that we use a lot. But uh, you know, uh, uh, they, they're easily spoken but hard to live. 
Committed means that I am going to be faithful. Committed means I'm not going to show up late. Oh, did I just go off into pastoring? A while ago, we were shouting. Now he's pastoring. I, I, you know, I got excited. Amen. And we're, we got others stepping up, learning new things. You know, they're doing new, new things around here. And I know they're learning. And, 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 and I, Brother Jonathan, I love you. Amen. I want you to keep at it. Don't you? Because he committed. He's committed. Oh, I know he stopped a couple of times. But you know what? During the week, I got a text almost every day. Pastor, can I go up and practice? Sure. Pastor, I need to practice. Yeah, let's go. You know what that tells me? Pastor, I'm committed. I'm committed to getting better. I'm committing to do the best I can. And if I can just practice some more. I liked what Brother Backus was talking about practice. We're all practicing. But the more the practice, the better you are. I'm just telling some of you, you need to practice more. Say, I need to practice more. I need to practice more being on time. I need to practice more being dedicated to my prayer. Oh, I'm fixing to preach up in here. Hallelujah. You got to be dedicated, amen, to your worship. Don't expect somebody else to come full in their vessel and then pour it out on your vessel. You ought to come full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, thank you, brother sis, for preaching with me on that. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Bumgarner, I just don't feel like worshiping today. I don't feel like praising today. Well, what if the Lord said, well, I don't feel like blessing you today. Pastor, I'm there Sunday mornings. Be thankful. I only need to worship the Lord one, a few hours each week and I'm good. Mm. Oh, I know I'm meddling now, but that's all right. I'm a vessel unto the Lord. You see, it's the vessel that stays full that gets used. It's the vessel that stays clean that gets used. When I'm looking for something to cook with, I'm not looking for the dirty dish. I'm looking for the one ready to be used. God's the same way. He's waiting for some of you to make up your mind to get yourself cleaned up so he can use you for his glory. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord is calling us. Amen. To do something more. More for the kingdom of God. What did he say in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19? What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You're not here by chance. You're not here by chance today. The Lord wants you. Come on now. He wants you. He walked throughout this world. You're not here by chance. He loves you, Brother Drew. He got to shopping around. He got to looking at everyone. He said, hmm. Mind if I use you? He said, man, I like this model. Well, yeah. I like this model. You know what? I'm going to give my life for him. Because this model suits me. This, this vessel suits me. I'm going to put my spirit in this vessel. I'm going to put my name on this vessel. And then I'm going to use this vessel for my glory. Hallelujah. Come on. He's shopping around. He's looking for vessels to use. Hey, let me look at this vessel. Yeah. I kind of like this vessel. It kind of moves around a lot. It's one of those jumpy vessels. Well, it's kind of intense. When it gets fired up, that pot stays hot. Woo! <laughs> That's all right. He needs some vessel to chase some devils. But you should be the vessel of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. You can be seated. You need to be vessels of the Holy Ghost. 
Come on now. I don't know why anyone doesn't have the Holy Ghost. You say, well, it's all that emotionalism. The talking in tongues and, and, and crying and, and oh, feeling. I'm telling you something. Until you've experienced the Holy Ghost, you don't know what you're missing. Mm. It is like Jeremiah said. Like fire shut up in my bones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I tell folks, hey, just repent of your sins. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Repent of your sins. Get baptized in Jesus' name. You got to have the name. If you're going to get married, you got to have the name. And receive you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because when the Holy Ghost gets on you, it's going to be like fire. Would you agree with that? Mama. You just don't know what you don't know until you know. You can be around it. You can see other people experience. But until it gets all over you. And sometimes you got to let go of some things. Hallelujah. I'll never for the rest of my days forget the night Brother Waddy prayed through to the Holy Ghost. There was so much going on that night. Sister Waddy, Sister Phyllis Waddy running laps around the church rejoicing. Uh -huh. But you know what really changed his life? When he took all that stuff that he was holding on to. You remember it, Brother Waddy. When he, I had that pot. And I was going to, I said, here it is. If you want to get rid of it, throw it in the pot. Throw it in the pot. I'm about to put the lid on it. Throw it in the pot. And I was about to put the lid on it. And that's all he could stand. He got up, tears streaming down his face. He began to make his way across here. The Holy Ghost was all over him. But the Holy Ghost didn't hit him completely until he put that in the pot. And when he did, the Holy Ghost hit him right over there. Amen. And I've never seen him. I mean, he ain't been the same since. Why? Because there was a vessel. But God don't want to share the vessel. He wants you to get rid of that mess that you're carrying around. The unforgiveness, the hate, the bitterness, the wildliness. He says, hey, I'll use you if you'll just surrender all to me. I've already paid the price, he says. Vessels unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that we have to come together now more than ever before as a unified body of believers with one purpose in mind. And that is to have the Lord fill our vessels so much that they overflow to those that are around us. What the problem with us today is, is we have too much of the church ministering to the church. Yes. I believe you should come to the house of worship and get your blessing. But too often, we come to the house of worship with empty vessels. And we... We expect God to move upon us, but first He has to fill us. And so every week it's just a continual thing. I get a little bit and then I make it through the week, but my vessel is just a little full. I'm not looking for a show of hands. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. But how many of you actually read your Bible every day? How many actually spend time in prayer every day? Uh, I, I didn't ask for a show of hands, but thank you. <laughs> That's more of a conscientious question than it is a, uh, you know, I told you I wasn't trying to show any show of hands. And for those that are good, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you pray every day. I'm glad you read your Bible every day. Because if you're going to stay full, that's what you got to do. Amen. You got to pray every You got to have time alone with God. You got to pray Amen. And be emotional. He's an emotional God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me just clarify some things. You know our focus prayer meeting. Amen. It's not intercessory prayer meeting. It's focus prayer meeting. I don't come to prayer meeting to hear everybody else pray. Your ability to pray does not impress me. The only ones that ever worried about having people hear how they prayed was a Pharisee. That's the truth. 
Well, there was a Pharisee and a publican. Both were praying. One was telling everybody how good they, he could pray and how great a, 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 a saint of God he was. And there was an humble publican over in the corner saying, I'm the worst of all kinds. I'm a publican. If you'll just forgive me. And God heard his prayer and ignored their prayer. I understand praying fervently. I love to pray fervently. We come to focus prayer to pray for the needs, amen, of the world. We join up with the world network of prayer, amen. We pray for needs that are brought to our attention, amen. We do that corporately. We do that together. But intercessory prayer shouldn't be on prayer meeting on Tuesday night. Now, don't get me wrong. We've broken out into some intercessory prayer, but, but that's not our purpose. That's not our focus. You know when you should be interceding? In your prayer closet at home. Amen. Oh, I know it's, 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 it's settled down a little bit. You know, pastor's not ripping a gear yet. You know, but I'm telling you something. That living for God, filling this vessel, has nothing to do with outward displays. It has everything to do with that eternal relationship between me and God. Drew, you grab your guitar. And you just sing a song to the Lord. You can make it up. You can you let it come from right in here. And it's just you. And this is my time with you, Lord. I'm going to pray and talk to you. I'm going to strum this guitar. And I'm just going to, hey, and you'll find out that you can get lost in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Why? I'm filling my vessel. You know why people have problems with other people? They're not praying enough. Oh, I know, I know, that, that, that ruffles some of your feathers. You focus more attention on things and situations and people than you do your relationship with God, and it shows. Amen. Oh, I know, I know, I'm supposed to get you all shouting. I gave you a portion of the bishop's message, and we shouted, thank God. But we have to be sanctified vessels. We have to be sanctified vessels. By the Spirit daily. I've got to be dedicated daily. Come on. You walk out into the world. You spend hours on a job. You spend hours commuting. You spend hours in the grocery store. We spend hours around other people. And the, and the spirits of the world are all around us. And we come to the house of worship. Oftentimes contaminated by the spirits of the world deception sinks in do you know why people tend to lean toward worldliness it's because they haven't gotten into his glory and gotten to his holiness I, I believe in the outward holiness but I'm going to tell you it really does start on the inside it starts in your spirit hello it starts in your attitude and when you say, you know what, I want to be like unto the Lord. When my spirit says it, then everything on the outside agrees with the inside. Amen. Amen. I know I'm slowing this down, but there's a reason for it. You know, in the scripture text we read about David. And David had won a mighty battle. And so, Toy sent Jerome to him. And he brought him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass he says i'm going to bring you these vessels i'm going to bring you these these rare things these things of value and david says that's fine you bring them to me but when you bring them to me i'm going to dedicate them to the lord you see i believe that every person in this congregation is a vessel unto the lord a vessel unto the lord you have victoriously overcome sinfulness of this world. It's great to be delivered from the world. Amen? Amen. It's great to be a believer today. But then after I become a believer, I have to do more than just say, hey, I've been delivered and I've been baptized and I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I must dedicate myself. I must purpose myself. What are you doing? I'm purposing myself unto the Lord I'm becoming a vessel unto the Lord I am going to separate myself from the world and become a vessel unto the Lord that's why Peter would tell us come out from amongst them and be ye separate saith the Lord why because the vessels have to be separated 
We know that communion is the outward action of taking of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. To recognize that we are all part of His body, all washed in His blood. We have been sanctified, washed and made clean and made whole. I believe this morning that if we are going to move forward as vessels of honor, vessels of mercy, vessels unto the Lord, that we need to come today committing ourselves to being vessels unto the Lord. I've reminded you earlier how good God's been to you. And that you are here as a vessel of mercy. But I believe if we're going to be vessels unto the Lord, there has to be sanctification. We've got to let the things of the past be in the past. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to empty out the vessel. You see, I've slowly been drinking this bottle of water. What am I doing? I'm... I'm emptying the vessel. Pretty soon there will be nothing in the vessel. And that's how it is. God fills us up. But then the world begins to take its sips from us. Not caring. Pick up that bottle for me, Brother Sisk. See, not caring about who we are. The world just starts putting pressure. And we don't get refilled. We just, no, no, put the lid back on it. <laughs> put it on tight. Squeeze that bottle. Squeeze it as hard as you can. <laughs> That's okay. You, all right, you've done enough. I proved my point. It's pretty tough, isn't it? You see, when a vessel's full... It can take pressure. It can take a lot of pressure. But when a vessel is half empty, it's easier to crush the vessel. I don't want you to be crushed vessels. I want you to be full vessels. I don't want the enemy to be able to apply pressure and crush you. I'm praying that when we leave today that we're going to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. I want us to make sure this morning that as we move forward into 2018 that we put aside all pettiness. This morning, I bring to your attention 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, the 24th verse. When he'd given thanks, he break it and said... Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. I want to bring to remembrance to each member a peace tabernacle that we are here for a purpose much bigger than ourselves you are here for a purpose much bigger than yourself but we need to be sanctified vessels unto the Lord I hope you're starting to feel what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost. I want to be a vessel unto the Lord. I want to be a holy vessel unto the Lord. I want to be a sanctified vessel unto the Lord. I want to be a washed vessel unto the Lord. He's been too good to me. He's made me a vessel of mercy. He's made me a vessel of honor. He has filled me with His Spirit. And I want to make sure that I follow after Him. 
I'm coming to a close this morning. And what I want to do is a little different this morning. But I want to ask each of us. I want to ask the ministry team that I asked to help me to come this morning. And just stand here in the front. And then I'm going to ask the church to come. All that would wish to participate. I would ask you to come down today.